Welcome in to another week of Talk of Champions. He is former Alabama quarterback and current Crimson Tide Sports Network analyst Tyler Watts. We're here to talk about Alabama football for the next half hour or so. And uh, this week is Ole Miss coming to town. Brought to you in part by a bunch of great folks, including the Watts Agency, your main time gig before you get to the press box. Tyler Watts and Associates, we have people standing by 205-822-5477. We'd love to help you with your home and auto insurance. Uh, listen, my digs against Tyler are never intentional, but you've won some ugly football games in your career as quarterback. Uh, Alabama's QBRs were 18.5 18, we 18. last week, the lowest since 2009. A win is a win on the road and a torrential downpour, but it's a different animal. It's SEC play this week. Can you take anything from the USF game and move it forward. The defense played well. Special teams was solid. That's two positives. Offensively, you really struggled in the first half, but made a couple adjustments, whether it be in the lightning delay or at halftime, you played much better in the second half. I don't know exactly what the mindset was going into that ball game, but it didn't play out the way that we all anticipated and probably not the way that the coaches anticipated it either. The crowd got into it. You didn't do anything offensively to really energize your, your unit and stay out there on the field, and it was a struggle. Maybe it's exactly what they needed. I don't have a clue. I just know talking to a couple of staff at a couple of different instances, they were like, we're fine, we're fine. So there never was any worry in the coaching staff. I think they kind of felt that they could turn it on or eventually would turn it on after some early mistakes. Can you use that kind of moment as team building, coaches – putting you in that situation, um, knowing that your QB1 isn't going to play, not going to play, and then you come back this week and Jalen Milrow is your quarterback. Is that a possibility now that everything is one united, cohesive group in that locker room? Well, you hope that it is united and cohesive. I think the biggest thing is this. is This is what we got, guys. This is what we're working with. We're all hustling every single day, pressing, trying to get better and better. There ain't nobody in this room that's going to be able to make it happen except for each, each and every one of you. So take on the responsibility, work hard, let's go out here, prepare, and play well. It's all in us. They're capable. It's just still a lot of mistakes that are being taken along the way. But there is no guy that's going to come in here and be the difference maker. There is no one individual that just needs to step up his game. It's across the board. Everyone needs to play better. And I think from that standpoint, maybe there is a little bit that you can build on. One more thing before I tell you about our friends at MyBookie, one of the great sponsors of the Talk of Champions here. Um, at some point, do you forget you're good? And I know that sounds like a dumb question. You doubt yourself. Yeah, that's things what I'm aren't saying. Going yeah. right. Absolutely. You doubt yourself. You start looking around going, who's the guy that's going to make the play? Oh, it's got to be me. And then you start pressing. We talked about this in the broadcast all the time. You can't press. That's the worst thing you can do. But when things aren't going well, you miss a play here, you miss an opportunity, you get behind the chains, which is a whole other topic that we probably need to go into, then, yeah, you do start saying, all right, it just ain't going to happen today. And it is extremely frustrating. Fortunately, though, it's just on one side of the ball. That defense is playing pretty good. Yeah, okay, we'll get more into the defense. MyBookie.ag, MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code next round. You know, Aaron Rodgers' season's over. Your season doesn't have to be. You can play the NFL. You can play college football, Major League Baseball, getting down to the playoff season. Jump on there, MyBookie.ag. Use the promo code next round. No strings attached, cash bonus. Available for you there as well. No strings attached cash bonus. MyBookie.ag. And they got the new cash out system. You got a three team parlay. You hit two of the legs. You don't like the third one. You can bail out for a little less of a payout or you can let it ride and hit big. MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag. Promo code next round. Uh, so let's hit a couple of things you talked on there first. The defense is playing really well. What are they doing well, you think? I love how they're flying around the ball. I think you have a really good secondary. I think you're pretty solid on both corners. South Florida, although you could tell pretty quick, they were a step or two slower at their skill guys than what we were, so you knew it was going to be a long day. They, they didn't have the ability to throw the ball. Uh, they just couldn't create any separation, so you felt really good there. But I think it starts there, and then you have secondary guys, whether it be Jalen Key or Caleb Downs, that's going to come up and, run, and help out pretty solid in the run game. And then the interior, I think they do a pretty good job of kind of stalemating, you know, muddying things up there at the line of scrimmage. Got to do a better job attacking. So many times we're able to get to the ball carrier in the backfield, the quarterback in the backfield, and just not be able to wrap up. That really hurt us last week versus South Florida, so need to do a better job of that. Expect to have Jaheim Otis back for this game. He didn't play at USF. But De I will say this, Tim Smith played awfully good last week, in my opinion. And you got to have depth anyway. you got to rotate a lot yes. of that position, so him playing great is huge. Uh, I will tell you, Dallas Turner 
was all over the field. Is there a chance we can continue to see that? Because he, too, seemed to be playing like his hair was on fire. He, he, he needs to. I mean, he, he needs to draw some attention because the more attention that's drawn to him, it's going to create some other opportunities for guys along the defensive line or even some linebackers, whether it be Deontay Lawson, Jahai Campbell, Trez Marshall, whoever that guy might be, as well as bringing in some secondary guys and some blitz packages. But if he can draw a little bit of attention towards him, it's going to free up somebody else. Yeah, I'm interested. You were talking about getting behind the chains. Now, for me, you're So back, now we're talking about offense again. Yeah, we're back to offense now. It seems like you, you were about to talk about first down plays. Is that how you get behind the chains? Well, it's you want to be able to run the ball, obviously, but sometimes an opposing defense is like, we're not going to let them run the ball. So then you have to kind of flip the script. It's kind of like pitching backwards to a hitter. Throw curveballs, off-speed stuff on first on, on the first pitch and then come back with a fastball later in the count. Sometimes you have to do that offensively as well. Throw to create the running opportunities. I'm not saying that's always the case, but you do have to mix it up and not be one-dimensional. I'm not saying that they were. But this is not an offense that can afford to be in second and eight, third and five or seven or eight as well. They have to stay ahead of schedule with the change pick up three to four yards, just keep moving it closer and closer because on third down, they need the run to be a part of their package of how they're going to attack the defense. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, and you viewers do the same thing in the chat here, but, um, you know, with Bryce and Tua, Jalen and Mack and all those guys, never really talked about that a whole lot. But back in the day, 15, 12, 11, 9, those championships, we talked a lot about staying ahead of the change. And Nick Saban said it a lot himself. Um, so without the elite quarterback where it seemed like we were passing more than we were running, back in the days when you had to run, I remember the Jim McElwain offenses. Mm -hmm. They did throw the ball in the first quarter early. They threw the ball to set up the run. So that's what you're talking about. It is. Now, granted, offenses have greatly evolved since even that time. That was a very run-heavy, play-action pass style of offense. And if you stayed ahead of the chains, it's a lot like what Michigan does now. So if you stay ahead of the chains and you're on, on pace where you need to be, your offense, all of it, stays a part of what you're able to call on the very next play. You yeah, have the heavy play action to get the one-on-one -on -one downfield and things of that nature. You can hit them big. But it's evolved now. Now this is a little bit more spread, and I still, I still think that Alabama's trying to figure out exactly who they are and what they want to do. But they need to figure it out quickly. You know, this is an offensive staff has a lot of mind, a lot of in intelligent people. They got some t talented kids out there, but they got to figure out how to best utilize them. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some of the familiar faces you have coming to town this weekend as Ole Miss comes and plays Alabama. Uh, the talk of champions being brought to you in part today by our friends at Lance'sLock.com. Lance'sLock.com. You can sign up for a day. You can sign up for a month. Get an annual with Lance'sLock.com. Play the NFL games. You can play the college games. Play the baseball. It's all at Lance'sLock.com. Uh, Alabama. Fans and coaches and players very familiar with the other head coach in this game, Lane Kiffin. And he has been very outspoken, stirring up who's calling the defensive plays, and he's been on social media. Uh, Lane doing Lane things. He is very much doing Lane You things. played the game when the other coach is making noise or the other players, any of that outside noise is happening. Does it trickle into the locker room? Does it fire you guys up when you're playing the game? How do you think it impacts the modern-day athlete? I think that everyone responds to it differently. I never gave a rip because I didn't really care what Lane Kiffin thought. I didn't care who was calling the defense as long as we were stopping people. And right now the Alabama defense is doing a pretty good job stopping people, at least the last couple of weeks. Um, there are others who are very much, they, they, they use that as fuel. But in today's society where, man, these guys are, are so connected. That's right. They are so connected. They know exactly what's going on. I think that they're a little numb to it probably more so than we even were back in the day reading the press clippings, which don't exist anymore, because it's, they're inundated with it on a daily basis. I think it's, it's, it's bigger fuel for us and for older folks than it is for the kids. Um, I want to ask you about... Because they feel disrespected every week, don't they? They do. Uh, but we've seen it from Deion Sanders you know, to anyone, uh, even pres all the way up to presidential campaigns. Uh, you fuel your, 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 your enthusiasm to go accomplish great things by the fact that other people are saying you can't do great things or that they're better than you or that. So that's internal fire for a lot of people. But is it internal or external? Is that not an external force that's motivating you versus yes. the other way around? Which is what the Alabama football program has always prided itself in doing is we don't allow external factors to influence us. We, we use our own drive. 
Yeah. We, we have our own set of goals and standards that we're wanting to achieve out there. I know they've why, always why said me that face. They've always said that. And that they said true. it a lot here recently. Yeah, they do always say <laughs> that. But even during great years past, there have been times you'll walk in through the facility and you'll see something taped on everybody's locker or you'll hear something about it in a pregame speech. It's not speech. lost is what you're saying. Yeah. And you've, you sat in on a few pregame speeches before. Yeah, absolutely. Were you ready to go play after those speeches? Uh, yes, 100%. 100%. Uh, Pete Golding, I was in the locker room a couple of times, a couple of spring games with Pete Golding. He's now the uh, defensive coordinator at Ole Miss. And uh, the guy's a fiery guy, and I think he's a really good football coach. He comes back now. And I want to ask you from a player's perspective, perspective not him knowing, because everybody watches film. So everybody knows what the other team's you know, tendencies are, plays are, and everything. But unlike a lot of people, he knows the people wearing the uniform. He knows, he knows who Jalen Milrow is as a person and what he can and cannot do. He knows what Jace can and cannot do, what Roy Dale can and cannot do, what those receivers, because he's watched them a bazillion times in practice last year. Is, is that an advantage and does that get into your head a little bit as a player like, man, you know, you know Pete's told him my favorite move is to fake right and go left. Or you mean whatever. everything they can see on film. We had this same conversation two weeks ago versus Sarkeesian. It's no different. And it was you know, explicitly laid out there. Yeah, they knew everything that we do. But guess what? We know everything that they do also. It goes both ways. There's nothing these players don't do on film that doesn't carry over. And that study is available to anyone and everyone who has access to film. Yeah. So I don't put as much emphasis on that as some others do. So those two guys are coming back, Lane Kiffin and um, Pete Golding, as Ole Miss comes to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. You look at Ole Miss, and over the years, you, you've, you've had some great receivers. From back when Hugh beat Alabama a couple of times, better than the quarterback to me was the receivers. They were tall, they were speedy, and they were deep threats, they were hard to cover. Um, Lane's had a couple of those. This receiving core to date hasn't looked like that group on the outside. And you said Alabama's defense is playing better. What do you make so far of this Ole Miss offense? Who's playing good, who's not playing good for you? As much as we love to throw on the explosive plays that are created on the perimeter for Ole Miss, it all starts up front with their ability to run the football. To me, they don't have as good of an offensive line as some other SEC schools, but they're always creative in how they're creating mat uh, matchups inside as well as on the exterior. And I've always thought Lane Kiffin is one of the best two or three play callers that I've ever seen as far as creating mat matchups that are advantageous to him and one particular player. Um, but it, he has to run the football for this offense to work. It's not just to drop back and throw it 50, 70 times a game like what, uh, what Houston used to do back in the day. Right. They have to be able to run the football. And they want to go fast. I think they're the third fastest paced offense in the country right now. But it's also gauged. They want to try to get you up there, keep you off balance, prevent you from rotating guys in. That's really what they're trying to do is just keep your guys on the field so they can wear you down. Um, I think everyone across the country right now, they want to sleep, is still trying to figure things out. We don't talk about this enough, but with the limitation of practice that they have in fall camp, it really kind of slows down their progress of what we're seeing right now. They're still a week or two behind of what teams 20, 30 years ago were, just simply because of the, the time on the field. So they're still trying to figure things out and get, get guys meshed, working together good, and get that chemistry on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and that includes Ole Miss. That bring in, they bring in a ton of portal guys. Yeah. All right? They've got a lot of guys who come in who are transfers. Yeah, if you look at their, their depth chart here, half the names are highlighted as transfers. I think that on the defense alone they have six projected starters who have transferred in in the last year. So when things are going well, that's okay because everybody's looking for that chance to get out here and play. But if things start souring, sometimes that can circle back around and it becomes a me game. And yeah. that's the worst thing for a football team. Jackson Dart, their quarterback, though, to date, as he comes into this matchup in week four, has been playing maybe his best football of his college career. And isn't it funny how everyone was anticipating, you know, Lane brings all these quarterbacks in and it's, it's, the message is almost, Jackson, I don't think you're good enough. I'm trying to run you off. Why don't you just leave? And he refused to do it. And he beat one of them out at a time. And I think that shows a lot in the young man. And I think that has elevated his game because he's now playing within himself, within the system. He's doing his job. He's not trying to be a superhero. He's not trying to be something that he's not. He's just being himself. And that's 
pretty doggone good. We told you about the Watts Agency. We told you about my bookie. We told you about Lance's Lock.com. Don't forget our friends at Roback.com either. Roback.com, wonderful sporting gear, great hoodies and golf gear as well. Check it out. Roback.com. Promo code TNR20. TNR20 gets you 20% off your first purchase there at Roback. Uh, dot com. So we've talked a little Ole Miss here, and uh, we had Neil McCready on earlier this week. He said keep an eye for Zachary Franklin, the big UTSA wide receiver, uh, could be making his Ole Miss debut. It looks like he's ready to go finally uh, in this contest. So maybe some new faces on the edge um, for Ole Miss in the receiving core, tight end, a couple of receivers. But the running game is not hitting in the same numbers they were this time last year. They're about two yards per carry behind. Was five was five yards. Now it's three yards oh, per carry. Oh what, my! What do, what do oh you? Oh my! What do you think? What of, are we going to do? What do you think of Quinshawn Junkins and and that Ulysses Bentley and that running <clears throat> attack? How healthy is Quinshawn Junkins going to be? We saw that he was a handful for Alabama, and he came on strong throughout the course of the year last season. But Tulane is a, is a team that kind of. They held their own versus Ole Miss in the trenches. They, they did a really nice job. So if, there's, if Ole Miss is not more physical than Tulane, and maybe that's just a compliment to Tulane, how good they are. But maybe this is an advantage to Alabama where they can stop the run with only committing five or six guys in the box. Because that really frees things up on the outside. And one thing, though, about this Lane Kiffin offense, you always have to account for the quarterback. He is not just a handed off guy and then neck it out the backside to try to, to keep you. He is a threat. And while they don't want to use him as that true running threat, he's not scared to run it down or pull the ball down and be able to lower his shoulder if needed as well. He had ran over a dude against Georgia Tech here last week down the goal line to get a touchdown. So he's not a guy that's, that's unwilling to take on some physical, you know, uh, beat ups or whatever to be a part of this offense. Yeah, he'll take a hit. tough little guy in Jackson Dart there uh, for that Ole Miss offense. For Alabama, um, the offensive line was without Tyler Booker last week, and everyone saw a couple of sacks given up by Caden Proctor. Um, having Tyler Booker back at left guard helps the left tackle, right? Having that experience, I would assume that Booker is almost like a cheat code for him. If we were getting beat inside constantly, then yeah, I would say that that's a little bit more beneficial. I know that Coach Saban had mentioned the communication was important. Tyler Booker really helped. Helped. Uh, Caden out on the communication aspect of it, but I think we need a little bit more help with tight ends or running backs or somebody when Caden's in a one-on-one -on -one situation there on the left tackle position. He's a big guy. I think he has a huge ceiling of what he can potentially be, but right now he's just getting beat real bad by that speed rush, and last week was kind of, that was an unfair advantage also for South Florida, believe it or not, because they kept, they were pulling in a defensive back, and that's who was speed rushing against him, and the dude was 150 pounds lighter. Of course he's going to be able to run around him. And they, were, they brought some unique little pressure packages that kind of confused us up front, confused the secondary, confused the tight ends as well in their blocking scheme. So it was kind of across the board. Hopefully this week we can just kind of simplify things just a little bit more and then hopefully take that next step to provide that protection that we need. At some point, do you, do you plan a tight end out there to help? It does not hurt, or at least to have a, a running back, somebody that's going to chip off the edge before they go out into, into pass and a pass route. There's a lot of things that you can do offensively, and I think that Alabama probably is looking at every opportunity available. Yeah, interesting. Tight ends are, you have a... This is one of the, I think this is an advantage that Alabama can continue to build upon. Yeah, talk about Dupree Robbie, and Nye Black. Robbie Utes and C.J. Dupree are the two guys that you can go in that can really shore up the protection aspect of it, but are still a big enough threat in the passing game that you can create some mismatches. Because if Ole Miss gets heavy because of our heavier package, then we spread them out and we run them on routes. But if they want to stay lighter, hey, just sit in there and pound the ball. Let's just run it down their throat if, if at all possible. Nye Black is probably your best weapon on the edge as far as a wide receiver because he's such a mismatch against linebackers and safeties. And you don't necessarily want to put him any further out there because you don't want him against a cornerback. But he's probably your best receiver in, in the bunch. But, he's but a you give, of, give he's up a little block. You give yeah. up a lot. You give yeah. up a lot in his ability to block. Okay. I, you know, I try not to, to focus too much on the negative, but we joke on the show all the time that Brown. You always yeah. focus on the negative. I know. Brown is a cup half full kind of guy. I'm a hole in my cup kind of guy. I don't even hold it half full. Um, the running backs have got to be better at picking up. Blocks. They've got to be better of, of blocking. You know on, what? The on, on pressure, coming. Jim. They're seniors. They yeah. are what they are. Yeah. I mean, they can give you the effort, but is, if they're in the right place and they're getting beat, they are what they are. 
and you just have to kind of so what you're telling me the quarterback is that has to move around or maybe they have to tack a little bit harder and get up in the line of scrimmage but there's been plenty of times when they flat been run over yeah there so you're telling me that they are there are certain running backs who take great pride in being physical and picking up blitzes and and you know protecting the quarterback and then there are some who want to run the ball and catch the ball are not as physical there are so so much of football is just about your heart and your want to. Yeah. I mean, so much of it is because it doesn't ultimately matter how big or fast you are. It's you're going to get out there and mix it up. Um, they need to improve upon that. Yeah. They need to improve upon that. Otherwise, they're, they're, they're going to find themselves not in the game in passing situations. And guess what that is? That's a tip. Got yep. it. He's not in. That means they're throwing the ball. Uh, this is a Jim comment, not a Tyler comment. This is a Jim comment. Uh, if Jace and the guys want to play in the NFL, they got to yes. get better at that because there is no place for you in that next league up there if you can't be on the field when they need you to, to protect yeah, the quarterback. At that, at that level, you throw the ball 60% of the time. Yeah, that, absolutely. Um, but as far as running the football, which is something Alabama, when they've done it, has, has done it really well. They did it against Texas early, yeah. and they did it this past week against USF. Roy Dell did a good job early in this late. past game. Yeah, yeah. Jace started off real strong. Um, hit a couple of, of good chunk plays early on that first drive and then kind of bogged down. But there was a lot more issues. And we always just look at, well, my goodness, he's not, he's not any good of a running back because look at the yardage that we're picking up. Y'all, it's, it's, it's so much more that's going on. Your inability to throw the ball deep, push them back off of your heels, that has something to do with it. The, the, the blocking schemes up front, the blocking ability up front, not opening up lanes, that has some of it to do with it. But Roydell, they, they stuck with it, though, and that's the key. You have to stick with it and almost be stubborn in your, in your attempts to run the ball and just impose your will because eventually in the fourth quarter, that paid dividends. Right. As Roydell really took over the game and started hitting some 8, 10, 12-yard chunk plays, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, even if you're – as long as you're staying ahead of the change, it doesn't have to be a 120-yard rushing day – for the running backs, just some running, which is going to help the quarterbacks. And here comes Jalen Milrow back. And you, you, you know, we talk about it again, uh, but you, in your career, you started, you didn't start. You started, you didn't start. So you've come back before. Jay Coker has started, not started. He came back. What does that do to a quarterback? When, you, when they go back to you, does that give you a little sense of uh, – a little sense of freedom, a little, little, little so. pressure off of you? Yeah, you hope so. I think every, every individual player is a little bit different. And it remains to be seen how he takes this and how he responds to it. Does he take the bull by the horn? Is, is there a, a sense of relief that's off of his shoulders? Or does he, does he have the mindset and the attitude of a told you so and goes out there and doesn't play well? Because guess what? He'll get pulled off the field again if that's the case. I think you saw enough out of Ty Simpson to know that you can build some things around him as well. But athletically, for what else is on the field at the, at the time, Jalen Miller probably is your best option. Yeah, I, I will tell you, just as a fan, you're sitting there at the Texas game, and it was Jalen Milrow being compared to Bryce Young. Now as you go into Bryant, and the fans were like, you could hear them bumbling, right? Okay, they're just like, ooh, Jalen's not Bryce. We, you know, Jalen's not Bryce. Jalen's yeah, not, not Bryce. But now this week, you can hear every Alabama fan out there after watching last week saying, man, we need Jalen back. We need Jalen back. Just feel like the attitude inside the stadium about Jalen Milrow is going to be totally different this week than it was the Texas game. It very well may be and probably should be. Yeah. Uh, that's an unfair comparison to compare him versus Bryce Young or anybody else. I still contend this, though. The issues last week were not one position alone. It's, it's across the board. There are so many things that need to be improved upon, and I know that that's where the focus has been all week. It's just a matter of can the guys go out there and execute. SEC play is always a little different than out of conference play. Uh, for what reason? Why, why is conference games different? Is it the fact that it's, it, the repetition that you see these guys, you've already played, some of these guys have already played each other once? Well, we're, we're four weeks in now. You know, we, we, we got some games and reps under our belt. We ought to know exactly or have a better idea of who we are, although that's obviously something that continues just to evolve. Um, but more importantly, I think it's you got the full gamut of everything that's in your arsenal on both sides. They're, you're not holding anything back. If you have something you feel is going to help you, you're implementing it, you're putting in play. No more protecting, keeping any of our playbook back. All right. The mybookie.ag, lanceslock.com, roback.com, and one more time, the Watts Agency. 
205-822-5477 for all your insurance needs, whether it be commercial and or personal. It's a hectic time in the, in the in insurance industry right now. A lot of inflationary factors coming into play. It's a good time to look at your insurance. Let me, uh, let's, throw, let's throw a new thing to end here. Give me one star of the game. Who do you think the star of the game will be? I'm every gonna... week I do this and every week I'm wrong. Do you really? Yes. Well, who's going to be? Be right this I week. So you. Be right. right. Yeah. Let me see here. Night Black for me. All right, you're going to go with Night Black. Yeah, so he's off the board for you. Yeah. Is that sheet bigger this week than it last is. week? It is. That's not funny. Is it an eyesight I'm thing? also older, older than I was. <laughs> yeah. I felt so bad, too, because we got that Facebook cam. Yeah. And I'm starting every once in a while. South Florida gave us the smallest roster I've ever seen in my life. Though. I mean, this thing legit. I think everybody needed a magnifying glass, but I had to put my readers on to, in order to see it. Yeah. Um, a guy that's... The pressure up the middle is always is always crucial. If Trez Marshall can play and he can wrap up in the backfield, he's a difference maker. He can really disrupt stuff. I say this all the time. I'm ready for the guy to wrap up and make some plays. He and Deontay Lawson, though, I think are going to be the factors because their ability to help with a run game, but also they're going to be asked and required to get out and pass coverage. That's going to be key. Yeah, tight ends for me. He's going with Lawson and the linebackers there as stars the game. Let's hope it's a winning week for Alabama and Ole Miss. That's the talk of champions right here on the Disrupt the Media platform. Remember, like and subscribe right here at Roll Tide Pods.